guys, it's Jade from Boho Bookworm. I cannot believe that it is already halfway through 2018. While I talk about some of my favourite books of this year, I'm going to be making a chili con carne. Or in America, I think you guys just call it chili. But I'm going to be doing it in a slow cooker. Or as you might call it, a crock pot. So many different words for everything. So to start this dish, I've got some cloves of garlic that I'm going to chop up. It is fire. Oh shit, one just fell in the sink that's full of water. Great. I wonder if I can still use it. Meh. Oh well. So while I chop it up, I'm going to be talking to you about definitely one of the best books I've read this year so far, and that is Lie to Me by J.T. Ellison. Oh, I loved it. But let me tell you about the premise first before I start gushing about it. When when I originally read the premise, I kind of got a bit of a, a Gone Girl feel for it, and I was actually a bit skeptical to pick it up because it's about like this this husband and wife, and they seem made for each other. But unfortunately, you know, like marriage is difficult. They've got financial woes. They've you know they're just under a lot of stress and stuff. Basically, like. I guess like all marriages and relationships in general, it's kind of like a love-hate relationship. We all piss each other off sometimes, but theirs is a bit more severe than that. One day, the husband's wife, Sutton, she, she disappears, and she leaves behind a note saying, do not look for her. All of their friends and family start to speculate and wonder what really happened to her. The husband and wife have been pretty much spinning so many lies throughout their entire marriage that something about everything in their relationship just does not stack up. The husband starts to get accused of having something to do with his wife's dis disappearance. So basically this guy is accused of being the killer, but he doesn't know, you know, is he being set up? You know, did, did the wife actually have something to do with killing their baby that she never wanted? And then did she kill herself or, you know, what the hell has happened? And this book is just so full of so many twists and turns. I just, I adored it. It's, you know, not very often do I finish a book in one sitting, but this one I read cover to cover in eight hours flat. I was just like, I could not put it down for the life of me. I read a lot of thriller and, you know, psychological thrillers and horrors and stuff, and I do feel like sometimes those kind of books could definitely leave you feeling a bit, a bit low with their dark and gritty storylines and stuff, but I mean, Lie to Me was just so entertaining. It was such a fun read, regardless of, you know, the, the devastating characters with a broken marriage. I wasn't bored once throughout this entire book. I mean, literally, I could not put it down. It was so fun. I loved the multiple points of views. I loved the whole dark, sinister feel of the book. It was just excellent. It has to be one of my favorite books I've ever read, not just in 2018. I would highly recommend you putting this on your shopping list if you order books or next time you go to the shops, buy it. I loved it. I'm making Mark read it right now and even though he's been busy reading it for a devastatingly long time, literally like probably over a month and a half and he's only 10 pages in, it's fantastic. To be very honest, I had such a tough choice choosing the six books for this video because I've read some really good books this year, not just thrillers either. So I tried to break it up with a few different genres for you because I know some of you don't like thrillers as much as me <laughs> because I'm obsessed. So uh, unfortunately the next book is another thriller, sorry guys, but I promise you there are others coming in this video. And that is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. My God, this book, had so much hype and you know I think a lot of books that have a lot of hype I, I don't really understand it I'm like well you know it was good but it wasn't that great but this one I understood it completely it was excellent The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn is about a 38 year old woman called Anna she's an alcoholic she self-medicates and she's a recluse one day she witnesses something through her window and um, she was not supposed to see it I do find it quite funny that Lie to me reminded me a bit like of the you know the premise of Gone Girl and the woman in the window obviously it reminded everyone of The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. So it's kind of funny that these are actually the two of my top picks, but it honestly I'm so happy that I gave it a go and didn't let my my skepticism uh you know sway me or make me not read it because it was incredible and it was very different from the girl on the train i promise you that there's a lot about like mental health in this book because anna has agoraphobia and it's basically imprisoned her in her own home she she can't go out in public she she doesn't like big open spaces what she sees through her window is you know really alarming and she wants to help her neighbors who 
she thinks are in danger, but she's really limited as to what she can do because she can't go out of her house. But when she does actually, you know, raise the alarm, she starts to realize that no one actually believes her because she is unreliable. She's a very unreliable main character, but so interesting. And everyone just thinks she's this absolute crazy psycho and just won't listen to her. Right, so I'm about to chop up my onion now. So that requires the goggles, you guys loved them last time. Well, here they are again. So, so the, the woman in the window by AJ Finn, it definitely had its similarity to the girl on the train, but it had so many things that were different about it as well. It was great. And one of those was the, the way that uh, agoraphobia was featured in this book. You know, I don't know much about this uh, mental disorder, but I have heard that the book actually really does a good job of explaining it very well. And that's great because a lot of the time I feel that authors definitely try and give their main characters alcoholism or anxiety or depression or something and so often I don't feel like they do the the mental disorders just as they they're not described it's not like I don't know I just feel like this was extremely well researched it was fantastic furthermore the whole book was incredibly well written it was really dark very atmospheric and as psychological thrillers go you know like I read a lot of psychological thrillers and I feel like Often the twists don't shock me or I figure it out way before you're supposed to and yeah like I just I always have these ideas that I know what's going to happen and very often I'm correct. Oh these goggles are great I'm not crying at all. Oh I should have done this sooner. The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn honestly did have twists that completely shocked me and it that was fantastic it was so fun to get that surprise and not have it be predictable it was so fun. I also feel like AJ Finn did a really good job of making us feel sympathetic for Anna. You know, like often when a character's unreliable, they kind of piss you off a bit and you're like, oh God, like, why are they so stupid? But, you know, Anna as a character, she's actually got such a sad and heartbreaking story. And, you know, you actually wind up really rooting for her and wanting, you know, just really wanting her to save the world. It's, t the whole book is like, it's um, in very short chapters, which makes it really fast and easy to read, despite the slower pace of the book. It was definitely addictive and compelling, and I am so excited to see what Fox 2000 does with the movie, movie adaptation. All right, so this is completely optional, but I'll have me some chili. So I'm gonna get about three or four of these beautiful dynamite packages and I am going to chop them up and then use them because they're so good, I love chili. I mean, it's a, it's a chili con carne. You don't have to have it spicy if you don't want to, but I think that defeats the purpose. If, you know, if some people don't like spice and that's fine, but I love it. So yes, Woman in the Window by AJ Finn. Fantastic, highly recommend it. Do not be scared about it being too similar to The Girl on the Train because it has so many differences and it, it just takes its own path completely. The next book I chose, Mine by Susie Fox, which got sent to me by Penguin Australia. And to be honest, from the cover and everything, I was like, oh yeah, like, uh, awesome. I wasn't overly excited and it's, it still just amazes me to this day that it's the books that you'd least expect that really just blow your mind. I'm so happy that they sent me a copy of this book because I loved it. All right, I'm starting to chop up my chilies now while I talk about this book. So I think that I might have a bit of a thing for unreliable main characters because mine is about this woman who wakes up in hospital after an emergency C-section and when she's finally reunited with her baby, she just, she knows straight away that it is not her child, but no one will believe her. It's like literally every mother's worst nightmare. So our main character, Sarah, she's accused of being mentally unstable and it's kind of justified when her family's mental health history gets revealed and it turns out that her mum had huge mental health problems. Unlike The Woman in the Window, which was incredibly slow burning, this book was so fast paced and the plot is so chilling and harrowing. I just... I loved it so, so, so much. The author actually comes from a medical background, so the entire book is weighted with, you know, proper facts and knowledge. It was incredibly well informed. For a debut novel, this book was excellent. It delivered so well in the suspense. It was so intense. I cannot... I, can't, I literally can't stop gushing about these books. I honestly became so invested in 
Sarah's struggles to, you know, get reunited with her real baby. I, I was amazed at how much I connected to the character and I, I just oh, I loved it. I'm sorry I'm saying that way too much, but yeah, go get it because it's so good. And the fact that it is set in Australia where I recently relocated to myself, it was just a really cool touch to, you know, read about where I'm now living and stuff. So yeah, it was really, really fun and enjoyable and I thank Penguin so much for sending it to me. Yum, look at that. Mm. All right, so now I'm just heating up some oil in the pan and then I'm going to put my mince in to brown. All right, so now my mince is browned, I've plopped it in the slow cooker and now in the same pan, I'm just going to heat up a little bit more oil and put in my onions and garlic and just cook it until it's translucent, probably about six, seven minutes. While I do that, I'll talk to you about the next book on this list, which is Lie She Told by Kate Olloman. I hope that's how you pronounce her name because I actually have absolutely no idea. I actually honestly really do not read enough books about writers. So this book was really cool and really different for me because it's about a woman who is a struggling writer and she has 30 days to write a book that is hopefully going to put her back onto the bestseller shelves. So she's really struggling and wanting to make it happen. She's got a lot of, you know, personal stresses as well as professional stresses in her writing life. She's trying to start her um, a family with her husband, so it's just, you know, there's it, a lot going on in her life for her to be trying to hammer out this best-selling book. It's a lot of pressure, so she just, you know, escapes to writing about her latest heroine. Then we have alternating chapters from another lady called Beth, who, you know, I, I thought straight away this was going to be her, um, it's her heroine, we're kind of reading a book in a book, so I love that whole concept, it was just so much fun to read about. And then, um, so her main character is this woman called Beth, and she's suspecting, she's just had her baby with her husband, and she suspects that the, that the husband is cheating on her, so she sets out to try and catch him in the act, but before she realises what she's doing, she's dumping her husband's mistress into the river. Alrighty, so now you've got your onion, garlic, chilli and mint in the slow cooker. So this is where the line between reality and fiction start to blur and you've really got to keep very focused when you're reading because it can get so confusing if you're not paying attention. It, so you've got like the main character is writing this story and her husband's best friend disappears and then the his best friend's body gets like dug up and her husband is arrested for the murder and you know like the main character's kind of got to like wake up and start to figure out what's going on and it's just insane it, it's, it's so confusing but so freaking brilliantly done right so i'm just putting some cumin in i love cumin and it makes it tastes so good i'm also putting some ooh, some oregano leaves into it because that's always really good i want you Good, God damn it. It's amazing how just a few little spices and herbs can just alter an entire dish and make it so bloody beautiful. Alright, so now you're gonna dump in some red kidney beans. Oh shit. And some tomato, diced tomatoes. Yum, 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 yum. Give it a bit of a stir, turn it on high, and that is what it looks like. Then you're just gonna put in some uh, beef stock and some red wine. So Lies You Told was absolutely incredible. It was like the, the, the main character that the main character is writing about was like her alter ego, and it was just so unique and fascinating and such an addictive read. I loved it so much, and honestly, it's, the closest book I've found to Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough, it was, it just, it had that kind of feel to it and it was so intense, very suspenseful. I just, oh, and the book in the book thing, I, I loved it. Five stars, done. I did have a non-thrillery book, a different genre for this video, but the more I've been cooking and talking about the thriller books, the more I've just been like, I cannot not include this one. And I kind of have to bump Almost Love by Louise O'Neill, which is the only non-thriller book in this list I was gonna have off of the list to add this one, which I'm actually, I'm not finished it yet, which is why I wasn't gonna include it, but I'm like 30 pages away from the ending and 
the whole book has just blown me away. So unfortunately, as much as I love Louise O'Neill and her book Almost Love really resonated with me and hit me hard, I do have to say that a book I have been thoroughly loving and I am planning to read as soon as I finish this video is Don't Believe It by Charlie Donnelly. It is so fantastic. It's not really a thriller. It's more of like a a mystery book. I kind of have to go sit down now because like dinner's in the slow cooker and it's on high for the next couple of hours. So let me go sit down and I'll tell you more about it. So this book is like, it's a, it's a mystery book more than anything else and it incorporates like kind of true crime documentaries and stuff which I find fascinating because I haven't read a book like that before. Like I recently read The Exorcist and I read um, A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay which kind of incorporated a documentary filming this possession but this was really fun because I've been getting so into crime and you know crime podcasts and stuff lately. So this is a fiction book about a true crime documentary where this woman basically like she finds people that have been put away for murdering someone or just done like crimes but they're she's almost certain that they didn't commit them so she then takes on their cases and she creates like a 10 part episode series of these people and she so far has gotten each of the people released from prison. So this girl called Grace, she's been in jail for the last 10 years for murdering her boyfriend while they were on holiday for a wedding in St. Lucia. So Grace reaches out to this producer and creator of the show and she's like, please help me. I, I've got so much evidence. I can show you that I'm, I'm innocent, but please help me because no one's listening to her. She's literally just been rotting in jail for the last 10 years. So this woman takes on her case and it's just become this mega hit TV show. It's getting heaps and thousands of millions of people watching it and speculating over it and it's fabulous. Like, it, it, this book is just so great because it, it kind of gives me so many details about like documentaries and producing movies and TVs and TV shows and what they what they do and how they look at their numbers and it kind of goes more in depth about camera angles and the dramatics of it all and it it was fascinating it is fascinating and I, at first I was like okay so I kind of know where this book is going this girl's innocent like she'll have a happy ever after story but it's not turning out like that it's actually getting so intense as the episodes air of her trial and what's happened and all this new evidence that's being brought up and you know the girl gets released from prison but then even more evidence comes up and it, I just it's so addicting so fun I cannot put it down I've literally got 30 pages left and I just I had to include it I really really did the last book that I'm going to be talking about today, I don't have a physical copy of and that makes me so sad because I've got both of her other books which I didn't enjoy as much as this one and that is I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. As, you know, debut novels go, I've read a lot of them but this one must be one of the very best I've ever read. I've always loved domestic thrillers but this one in particular is so authentic and it just made me realise that I think that domestic thrillers and psychological thrillers are is my favourite genre. It it kind of sealed the deal for me. My adrenaline was full on pumping throughout this entire book. The thing I really like about this book is that it didn't start off like your typical thriller does at all. It was more of like a whodunit but in a really unique way. It's like it's a hit and run. The chapters alternate between the police who are trying to solve this hit and run case and also between this woman who is trying to start over in life. The start of this book was just so heartbreaking and tugged at my heartstrings instantly. I just I connected with everything straight away. Honestly like if you want to know why my nails look this shit it's because of books like this. I literally bit my nails down to the quick as I was reading this book. It was so suspenseful. I, you know, I couldn't put it down. It just morphed into this insane domestic thriller that I loved. It also had my much loved and appreciated plot twist that blew my mind and had my head spinning. I, I did have one problem with this book though, but I mean, it's still, it's this good that it did make it into my list as one of the top books I've read this year, but the main character was very weak and I do enjoy a strong character that I can, you know, look up to. And, you know, I've been in, 
in abusive relationships and stuff like that. So I, I don't like reading about something that puts me back into feeling helpless and scared and weak. Like, like I felt like with this main character, she was very vulnerable and she wasn't sticking up for herself. She, she was just an absolute coward. But I, that you, that's what the author wants. I mean, the entire book was so believable and so raw and real because as someone that's been there, like I could really feel it and it was, it was very intense. I've read a couple of Claire McIntosh's books now, I've, I've read all of them, and with this one, however, I wasn't a big fan of the detective scenes. I didn't enjoy their personal life kind of fitting into the different pages. I, I didn't, re I wasn't invested in them whatsoever. Whereas with her other books that I've got on my shelf, I actually really did enjoy the detective and the police you know, chapters I've connected with the with the cops a lot more and I don't know if maybe it's, that's just because she she grew as an author and a writer after the first book and maybe she got that advice from someone that the, the cop chapters were a bit weird. But Claire McIntosh, she comes from, you know, the FBI police background so I guess she really does want to add those chapters in and that's great because it, it does seem like she really knows what she's talking about, like with Mind by Susie Fox and the medical knowledge that's weighted in it. It's, it does have, it's very authentic, but I just something felt a bit off about this as a debut novel with these, the police chapters, but it really has improved in her next books with, with the police. You know, like I just I felt a lot more invested in them and enjoyed them probably even more than the actual storyline. <laughs> All right, so that was uh, my video and my new recipe for chili con carne or chili crock pot. Uh, it's gonna be on the go for the next five hours, so yeah, that's about it. I'll just make some rice a bit later and easy, simple ass meal that you don't really do much for besides a bit of chopping and yeah, love it. Uh, tell me some of your favourite books in that you've read this year in the comments down below. I, I really hope that I've enticed you to pick some of these up. If you've read any of them and you feel the same way or even if you feel differently, let me know in the comments down below. I love talking to you guys and I hope to hear from you soon. Bye!